Here, the Honourable Damien O'Connor. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. If, if, if I was being flippant or wasn't making um, uh, what I think are, are worthwhile or valuable points, then I could understand you didn't give me the call, but you have, thank you, and I appreciate that. Mr Speaker, goes in this, this part too is about the transfer of the forests. One of the questions I've always had about, and it goes back to again the objective of the bill, and that is the settlement of, of a long-standing grievance. In fact, a contract laid out in 1840, um, you know, about a partnership, and one that was clearly, um, uh, uh, I guess, um, shortcutted by the Crown, uh, and, and we obviously have to address the grievances. Mr Speaker, we're going to hand back, as I understand, the forest land, and that may seem really good. That may be really great because uh, we have a connection with the land, and, and as a farmer I can understand that. Um, but then the land in itself, and there's much Māori-owned land around the country, not delivering the benefits, in fact not even paying its way in some cases, and in fact and rather than being um, beneficial to iwi and Atiapa, it could be a liability. So there are a couple of things, and I've believed for a long time that forest land in itself, while a wonderful emotive um, uh, connection um, with iwi, with whoever owns the land, doesn't necessarily deliver the benefits. And I think we're starting to see this. In fact, there are questions being asked um, around the country now about the division between forest ownership or forest land ownership and then the cutting rights ownership. And, and who gets to determine where the logs go and who gets the benefits in the, 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 of, of a, a rising market or who carries the losses from, from a declining market? The issue being that the trees growing on the land are what are going to deliver the economic benefits back to Ngāti Apa. Now, that could come by way of a fixed lease, a fixed term lease calculated on the... The, the return on logs. Now, I'm not aware of the details in this. What the, the settlement does do is terminate obligations in relation to the forest. And I'm not sure. I guess they may relate to replanting. They may relate to possible ETS obligations. Or there may be obligations in regarding access. I'm not sure what they are. And I guess the minister might be able to take a call and answer those, because they are quite important things. And the question I ask is that, are we sure, and it's no reflection on the negotiators, but, but there are some very smart people around this country, and, and the very best of intentions of negotiators or otherwise, not perhaps foreseeing the change in the ETS, and I don't know what the government's going to actually deliver, by way of forestry obligations around the ETS or indeed obligations to agriculture. It's yet to clearly define what it will do. The point being, Mr Chair, and I'm not deviating too much, um, is, that, is, is that, Mr Speaker, this settlement that terminates the obligations in relation to the forest of the land that is transferring back to Ngāti Apa are unclear to me. And it is important that we in opposition can ensure that legislation being passed in, the in this House indeed delivers on its intent. And the intent is to do justice to Ngāti Apa. So they will get half the prison land back, and I've got question marks about what that might do, and they will get, and they will get the forest, and they will get the forest land back. The question is, in that transfer, Mr Quinn may know the answers to this, please take a call, please take a call. I, I confess I was not on the select committee, but I've come in, I have come in objectively, looked at the bill, read through it, and I'm asking questions of the members of the select committee or of the minister, because I think there'll be a lot of people out there wanting to know the answers themselves as well because we know there's confusion around ETS and around forestry and around land below the forestry. Who gets to pay the ETS obligations? We've had a discussion here. We are not sure because in the, north, in the far north I believe it is the landowner, but I was led to believe that it's the, actually the, the person who cuts down the trees or has an obligation to replant. 
Please, Mr. Quinn, can you get up, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Honourable David Carter. Mr. Chairman, I move that the question be now put.